Alright, so in this tutorial I want to show you how to use a really great add-on called Point Cloud Visualizer, um, which is made by this user called Ulik, U-H-L-I-K. I'll put the link in the description. In order to use it you have to download the zip. And then it's a bunch of add-ons packaged together, so you're going to need to go to where you downloaded that file, extract the files, then go inside, and the one we're going to be working with is this one here, Point Cloud Visualizer. So load up Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab, press Install, and then go to the location where you saved those files. And then I'm just going to go in here and select space view 3 d point cloud visualizer .py and then press install and then you just have to check this box to install it. The next thing we need to do is find a point cloud to work with and you might have one already but in case you don't you can download one from here. I'll put the link in the description again. This is a photogrammetry scan I did of a room. If you go to this location and then press download 3D model you can choose PLY format and download it. So once you've downloaded the point cloud from Sketchfab you need to extract it and then go to this folder called source and then extract that folder and inside there you'll find this file called pointcloud.ply now we can go to blender you can go over to the properties panel here and press this little tab or you can press the hotkey n and go down to the tab that says point cloud visualizer and this is where you can do all of the manipulation of the point cloud in order to display the point cloud you have to attach it to an object so i'm going to delete the default cube i'm going to create an empty object and then with the empty object selected I'm going to go back to the point cloud visualizer section and then click on the load file icon then I'm going to go to the location where I saved my file and I'm going to select the PLY file and then press load PLY and nothing happens immediately but if you press this button draw you can see that it will render the point cloud on the object pretty cool if you move that object so if I select the empty object press G to grab or R to rotate or even S to scale you can see that you can manipulate the point cloud with that empty as a base point. There are loads of different functions and settings within point cloud visualizer so I'm just going to go through a few of the key ones I'm not going to do everything. Here we have the display percentage and this will influence the number of points which are displayed in your scene so you might find that if your point cloud is very heavy you want to make this low so that you can actually navigate the viewport. Uh, you can change the size of the points themselves you can make them really small and have a much more delicate model or you can boost them up make them really chunky and then you can see that you get these sort of circular blobs in your scene. You can also change the opacity of the points by changing the alpha value which is quite handy if you need to fade the cloud and overlay it onto something. You also have the option to apply illumination to your points because they're not rendered like normal blender objects there is a sort of custom lighting system built into this add-on so you can choose the direction of the light, you can choose the intensity uh, and you can also choose the shadows um, but I'm, I'm going to disable this for now. You can also render the points in a way that's different from the PLY file so you can choose depth and that will render the points darkness based on how far away they are from the viewport. Viewpoint, you can choose normal which I believe displays the normal direction although this information isn't really visible in this point cloud and you can select position which uh, renders the uh, XYZ position and I'm not sure why it does this tiling thing maybe somebody knows. You can also restrict the visibility of the points using this clip option. The way I'd recommend doing that is by creating an object like a cube, scaling it, scaling it up making it visible as a wireframe object and then if you go back to your empty that holds the point cloud enable clipping planes and then where it says object down here you can select your cube and then if you press set clip planes to bounding box you can see that it restricts the point cloud to that cube that you have selected which is a really nice feature because sometimes you only want to focus on one bit of your point cloud and you'll notice also that after you've done this you can change these values in this matrix here and clip even further. There's also an edit mode which lets you change the points and if you press enable edit mode and wait a little bit you can see that the view changes to this uh, editor mode and we get this little toolbox in the corner. What you can do is you can remove points or move points around. For instance there's a section here that's that's uh, reflected into this mirror and if I wanted to remove these I could first enable this little x-ray view here. If I click and drag it will create a bounding box which will allow me to select those points and if I press delete and press vertices and then if I press update it will remove them um, and once you finish editing you can press end. So going further down the menu we have this filter section which allows us to filter the points and I don't want to go into too much detail into these because there's a lot of functionality but one of the things that I found quite interesting was the color adjustment section. If you enable this you can change the exposure, gamma, brightness, contrast, hue, uh, you can change the saturation and you can change the value 
value of your points. And this is really amazing because it means that you don't have to worry about doing this using some other software. You can do it all within the add-on. Um, so I'm just going to reset these values. Here I'm just pressing backspace, hovering over. And there's also the option to invert the colors, which is pretty interesting as well, I think. So at some point, you're probably going to want to render an image of your point cloud out. But you'll notice that if you just press the render image button, nothing shows up. So in order to render, first of all, you have to make sure that your file is saved. And once you've done that, you can set an output location for the rendered file. So I'm just going to set an output location here. You also want to make sure that your camera is in a place where it can see the point cloud because it's going to, it's going to render the view from the camera. So here I'm just going to jump inside my camera, position it somewhere interesting. If I go back to select my point cloud container and then hit render, it will render the scene from that point of view. So if I go here, I can see my output result. And the nice thing you can see also is that it's rendered as a transparent PNG. You can also render an animation. So if I were to add a keyframe for my camera, move along the timeline, and then add another one, I could then select my container and press animation. So you want to be a bit careful when pressing the animation button because it can take quite a long time to render the frames. But once they're done, you can go over to the place where you saved them and then you get a frame sequence and you'll get a frame sequence, which is an animation of your camera move. So it's really great to have that functionality in there. So another thing you can do that's really great is once you've edited your point cloud, you can then re-export it as a PLY. And that's really nice because this takes away some of the stuff that previously you would have had to have done in um, Reality Capture or Cloud Compare. Um, and it, you can do it all within Blender. If you press this export PLY option, it will take your edited point cloud and allow you to export it. And so that's a brief overview of how you can use the point cloud visualizer add-on. There is lots more functionality here that I haven't covered, but I would encourage you to um, support the developer because this is really an incredible add-on and it's grown a lot over the last year or so. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, so here's a little extra if you stayed until the end. You can actually keyframe the parameters in the add-on. So here I have keyframed the percentage count in the render section and you can use that to create this effect here where the particles are kind of fading in over time.